My name is Lauren Barrett. Probably most of you have seen me annoy you with emails over the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm probably bombarding your email list. Um, I'm the business development manager at Civica. I work with mainly local authorities. So any sort of new business or account management, um, I, I take care of within the local authorities. So I'm working with councils on a, a daily basis to, to understand their challenges and um, objectives so we can build solutions around that to, to ha have really good outcomes, basically. Um, I've got my colleague Anita on as well, so I'll hand over and she can do a bit of a brief introduction. Can't hear me. I thought I was on mute. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Um, so I'm Anita Pillai. I work with Lauren and a few of the others that are going to join this call as a sort of pre-sales solutions consultant. I've got an uh, extensive number of years um, experience working in local government. Um, so primarily my role is to work with customers to understand their processes and what their requirements are around information governance and, uh, and streamlining your workflows to kind of help you maximise the use of, of iCase work. Um, so I've kind of worked in areas of complaints management, um, member inquiries for local authorities, um, freedom of information, subject access requests, and individual rights and all the other sort of IG type disclosures, etc. So uh, yeah, um, I'll be carrying out the um, sort of uh, demonstration on the IG stroke I case work system sh soon. Brilliant. <clears throat> it's probably worth noting, noting as well. I, I keep moving my head around because I'm not used to this platform. I'm used to Teams where I can play my background out. So I have to spend a couple of minutes this morning maneuvering things from the background. So, um, yeah, if you see me nodding my head, it's because I'm not used to this camera. Um, right, we'll just give it another minute and then we can we can jump in. Right, so let's start. Um, I know we're on a bit of a tight schedule, so we will kick off now and any, any newcomers, I'm sure they'll be able to just pick up as, as and when they jump in. Um, so just to go through the agenda for the, for the next hour, initially we'll start off with just a brief overview and introduction to Civica um, and specifically to iCasework, which is the case management solution that we use at Civica to manage cases, um, specifically FOI and complaints. Um, I'll, that'll be done by myself and then I'll hand over to my colleague Anita who will be doing the main part of the webinar um, and she'll be going into FOI, SARS, disclo disclosure logs um, and everything, information governance. We'll then spend a bit of time at the end um, doing a QA, and a and then we will go on to any feedback that anyone has and then just um, a couple of next steps on our end um, to, to wrap the demo, to wrap, right, to wrap the webinar up. Okay, brilliant. So probably most of you on the call, um, those of you who do work in public sector will have already know who Civica is um, well in to most public authorities. Um, we're one of the largest software companies in the UK and um, been going within public sector for the last 30 years. So there's an extensive amount of knowledge that is actually within the within the organisation. Um, and we, we will take that into all of our um, new opportunities to, to, to bring those skills in. Um, next slide. Um, so yeah, so, th so these slides are just meant to give a really sort of um, brief flavour into Civica and iCasework. Um, so specifically within case management, um, these numbers just give you a bit of a, a, a an illustration as to the sort of depth and, and how wide we are within organisations. We've got around 200 clients, around 130 of those are actually um, local authorities. Um, we've got 25 years specifically within case management and, and a lot of the team have actually been with us since the beginning um, and are that driving force around development and, and product roadmap. So we've got a, a lot of skills and expertise that have stayed within case management and that really um, have an input into the, to the direction and to all um, 
new opportunities that we get to work with, with to work with pu pu public sector organisations. Um, we're actually across the globe as well, so we're, we're in around six con six continents. So the solution is being used all around the world, essentially. Next slide. Uh, so obviously today we are here just to talk about our FOI, GDPR and SARS solution, um, but this is just to give you a bit of an understanding of the other um, areas that we work in as well. Obviously today we'll be honing in on FOI and GDPR, but in the future we will be hosting other webinars to, to cover complaints and employee relations. Um, but if anyone does have any questions about any of the other areas that we work in, then obviously you'd be more than welcome to ask after the webinar and we can we can go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, next slide. So this is just to essentially give you a bit of an understanding of some of the, the household brands and, and large local authorities that we work with, um, specifically within iCasework. We've got some of our local authorities on the call today. Um, and what we are really proud of within iCasework and, and specifically um, yeah, the case management is our 98% retention rate. We will do our utmost to work with um, our customers to build on, on their objectives and be able to provide solutions to, to continuously grow with them, um, regardless of what their direction or strategy is. So yeah, it's something that we're really proud with and hopefully um, yeah, we can demonstrate that throughout the, th throughout the next 20 minutes. Um, but probably important to notice is that all of the brands on that, it, they're all, complete, all completely come with their own challenges and unique um, requirements. So we will work with everybody to, to understand exactly what the issues are and challenges and we will build solutions around that. Um, so yeah, so what I'll do is now I'll hand over to Anita who will be going into the main um, body of the webinar and yeah, over to you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for that. So uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm just going to quickly talk to you about the iCasework um, case management system that we use to manage um, information requests. So that's primarily um, sort of a um, freedom of information, subject access requests, um, individual rights requests. And obviously we have some other um, parts of the system that manages things like breach and incidents and um, also bring out a, a data protection impact assessment. So iCasework is primarily a solution. We have a platform for uh, managing all these case types. The system provides a simple um, journey for customers. Um, so obviously uh, residents for local authorities, um, and it's a very simple user-friendly um, journey for them to able to submit a um, data subject access request or freedom of information request quite easily and quickly through a sort of self-service form that you may embed on your website, which interacts with the iCasework system. So from my user experience perspective, it's really useful to have this sort of um, tailored bespoke form online and uh, you customers can fill out the, the sections of the form, the information that we need to be able to handle their information requests um, very easily without having to go back and forth in terms of clarifying information, etc. So it's very sort of um, structured and we receive all the information, particularly around subject access requests where we need um, proof of ID, for example, and sometimes that could sort of put time on requests where especially it hasn't been provided up front and you need to go back to the customer to ask them for proof and uh, verify their their ID before we can proceed with their request so it, it tamed, saves time um, a lot of time and effort and energy in manually processing freedom of information requests and subject access requests so um, it manages all of those areas we also have a really um, good platform for managing data breaches and reporting data breaches and you can carry out um you can you can log those you can report on those also and we can carry out data protection impact assessments the system has been designed and there's a process within the system where you can analyze and identify and minimize the data sort of protection risks re revolved around perhaps a project or a plan that you're looking to kind of implement within your authorities 
Um, so that's a little bit of a, um, a background on their customers. It can use the self-serve form. So we'll talk about the self-service portal and that can be easily embedded on your organization's website and customers can um, fill in the form, comes directly into the system, but also the traditional methods and channels like emails, where you can have generic mailboxes where you're managing FOIs and SARS at the moment. We can have those integrated within the iCase work system. And so they all sort of land in a single sort of repository ready for your um, IG teams to pick up and start managing. Next slide, please. So this is a sort of a, a disclosure log. So we have a key feature of the system um, for information governance teams is to be a, easily be able to kind of publish um, responses that have been approved and sent from your organization. So this is a integrated part of the workflow. Um, the disclosure log allows you to publish redacted versions of freedom of information responses that your authority has already sent out and they will be published um, on a redacted version will be uploaded to your disclosure log on your on your website. So this kind of streamlines the process. So during logging a FOI, um, the system prompts you to say you've got similar requests that you've answered previously. So it takes this site time efficiencies in terms of saving time and effort to actually manage, log and respond to an FOI. It actually pulls up similar requests. It will appear making it easier for your teams to locate previous responses and then actually signpost the resident or the customer to um, the, um, the link on your disclosure log and they can easily self-serve and find the response and any associated attachments with that response via your website. Um, so again, that's a redacted, it automatically redacts through the system um, and a version is then uploaded to the website. Um, as you can see, it prevents repeated requests. It kind of saves time around um, logging every single request that comes through and pushes um, the requester to self-serve um, on the disclosure log to find the information for themselves first before submitting um, a new request. Next page, please. Okay, so um, what uh, you know, it's a digital solution. It works really well. I'm talking from both from a user experience perspective, having managed and headed up the team of information governance officers and complaints officers in a local authority environment. It supports and streamlines your internal processes. So it's not just a new case management system that comes in um, and that is ready to go in terms of managing FOIs and SARS. It also gives authorities the the opportunities and organisations the opportunities to streamline streamline your internal processes, your working practices. It provides uh, your users, your staff, a, a great journey in terms of managing and responding to requests um, through a sort of a, a comprehensive platform, but a very simple and user-friendly system to use. Um, and all, there's lots of time-saving sort of features within the system that allows your caseworkers to work together. You can collaborate across the organisation very quickly and easily um, and efficiently um, to kind of get information from people in relation to SARS and FOIs to be able to kind of then send a single sort of response to the requester rather than be sort of people within councils and authorities responding to certain parts of it and customer receives separate responses. So you can manage manage cases, you can track and monitor uh, progress on cases, um, you can report on all of these activities with the system. Um, it aligns with the information governance um, offices practices, legislation and regulations um, and also best practice. So we have a um, information governance user group um, 100 plus members to that user group who currently use the system to manage FOIs and SARS and we get together every quarter to talk about best practice, share best practice, how can we sort of enhance the system in terms of the workflow, etc. And then we kind of take that back to um, our technical teams to kind of consider and improve the system as we go along. So the workflows can be figured to align with your organisational's um, internal operating practices. Um, there's a lot to say on this slide, but I'm, I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to move on to the next slide. Um, we, we kind of talked about um, self-serve integrations, automation. The system has self-serve and website integration and quickly and easily captures 
information directly from websites or via self-service channels and automatically arise within the iCaseWorks system. It can send out automated acknowledgements so you don't it saves you the time to actually do those acknowledgements. Um, it has some core integrations um, that, which includes things like email integrations which is two-way, um, single sign-on so it saves time in terms of logging on and using password and usernames. Um, so integration into Office 365 Word and and what do they know website so we know we receive a lot of um, requests from what do they know and it, it has a sort of key that uh, integrates what do they know um, requests um, directly into the system. You have things like calendar integration so case workers can see directly from their calendars what, what information is, what cases and tasks they need to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So you don't have to be into the, in the system to know, to know that. So we have the option to kind of show cases and correspondence in your Outlook uh, or Google calendars. Um, there's a range of um, extensible REST um, APIs that can securely kind of link with any of your sort of back office systems that you're using across the councils or your organisations. Um, and that can retrieve a lot of information, push and pull through APIs through your back office systems to kind of create cases or pick up certain bits of information from your back office. So there's a lot of uh, integration capability and customised integration also. I think the good thing about the, 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 the auto-generated workflow is um, if you have new members of the team that come in, um, they're not familiar with the FOI or SAR process or legislation. The systems workflow is configured and designed to kind of prompt your staff to understand what to do next and the stages. So step by step sort of guidance. The system is a sort of it guides your staff to kind of know what to do next. And um, does an exemption apply to an FOI? Do I need to check for verification? Do I need to stop the clock? So it kind of prompts you um, and it's kind of aligns with good working practices, which we've tailored and uh, tailored as we've gone across the years of, of implementing this system. Auto-generated um, sort of um, correspondence, reminders, alerting not just yourself as a caseworker, but also people who you're waiting for information from will also receive those automated um, a notification saying you need to respond to this particular task or complete this particular correspondence. Um, next slide, please. So we have an interact uh, uh, interactive um, inbuilt dashboard within the system. So as you can see, that's a screenshot of what a, a sort of a team dashboard view. Um, essentially, this allows you to manage um, and ensure compliance, understand cases that are in the system and um, within the team environment and also within the organization view of what's happening across the board. So team managers, very good for team managers to kind of manage their IG teams, FOI teams, our teams, kind of monitor governance and compliance. Are we, are we meeting our sort of key performance indicators around FOIs and SARS um, along with the information sort of commissioners um, sort of level and also internal um, key KPIs that you would set for yourself. So it gives you a full oversight and visibility of cases across um, individual teams and an organisational view as well. Um, helps you manage performance, understand what's happening. You, um, if there's workload sitting with an officer, for example, it's rag rated, as you can see, red, amber, green. You can go in and drill down and find out what sort of support your team member may need. So as a manager, a very, very useful tool to kind of reallocate work very quickly and easily. If you've got unforeseen absence within your team and FOIs or SARS need to be pushed to other members of the team, you can easily sort of drag and drop and reallocate work very easily without having to go into cases and find out what's going on, etc. Um, the, it allows you to drill down. So as you can see on the screen there, but probably very small, but you, they're hyperlinked um, data and statistical sort of titles and values that you can see there. And you can actually drill down on each of these uh, for values and, and titles to see drill down information in relation to that case um, and, and what's happening in that case. And the drill down feature also gives you uh, the opportunity to see all your cases across your teams in a list. You can export to Excel, um, you can print that list, etc. So there's quite a few number of features there with the dashboard. Um, next slide, please. 
so the, the, the I case work system has a, a dynamic reporting suite. So it comes with a report library um, and the report library has inbuilt sort of predefined reports for you. Um, you can report on a monthly, quarterly, weekly, daily, um, yearly analysis. Very, very useful um, from a local government point of view. Um, reports that you might be taking to scrutiny committees, cabinet meetings, annual reports complaints or FOI uh, reports, very useful tool to give you a host of information that you can drill down and you can give um, the audience um, sort of in, insight into what's going on or what's happening um, within your organisation in relation to FOIs and subject access requests. Um, you can favourite those reports. So as you can see on the on the screenshot, there's a report library and it pulls up all the, you know, as a system administrator, you can manage the system by looking at administrative reports. You can um, analyse information um, from these predefined reports. You can also create your own ad hoc reports on the left hand side. You can share those reports with other colleagues across the organisation. So it's about best practice reports, not recreating reports. Um, sharing those ac across with your colleagues so that you don't have to recreate those. You can um, drill down on those reports, you can duplicate those reports, you can subscribe people to those reports. So people who don't use the system may want to see performance statistics um, on a weekly or monthly basis and you can subscribe people to receive those um, reports automatically arrives in their sort of e email and then they can view those. Um, so there's a, a number of um, in, pieces of information, particularly around data and insights. So it's not just a case management system. It gives you um, a vast amount of data around your organisational handling of FOIs and SARS. It helps you understand the, the different types of requests that are coming through. And then you can perhaps use that information to start publishing more information on your websites, um, make it very easy for people to actually access information readily available rather than respond to freedom of information requests, for example. Next screen, please. So we talked about a bit about reporting and obviously in the data and insight that comes out of there. So you can sort of understand the trends and themes. Again, you know, something that we I did in my previous role is understanding the number of different types of um, um, freedom of information requests and how they're classified. And so having classifications that the organisation uses as a single classification for each type helps you report back on those. It provides invaluable insights into support critical areas of an organisation, um, including obviously the most important one, which is compliance um, and productivity. So, you know, how much time is being spent on managing FOIs within your organisation, um, which which service areas or teams with, or functions or directorates within your areas are spending more time than others? What are those types of requests that are coming through? How can we help those teams kind of minimise the time that they have to spend on those requests? And you get a lot of sort of manage, you know, where is the, the resource allocation in terms of do they have enough people to respond to those complex types of FOIs and SARS that we know that sort of care, social care areas that can receive. So essentially identifies bottlenecks, provides insight into helping organisations proactively publish information. Um, it's a single repository, so it all comes in. So breaches, um, DPIAs, FOIs, individual rights requests, disclosure requests that you receive from third parties, all can be managed. So all your information governance related requests and case types all managed within a single central sort of area and you can report on it centrally also. Um, Breaches, um, we've talked about, you can manage those and you can report anything back to the ICO. Um, it has a, an, a, a you can minimise the risk associated with getting things wrong, we know, and putting things right, as we know that, um, and so the, there's an approval process within the system. So information governance officers can respond to cases, draft responses, um, get it quality assured and checked and approved by more senior managers within the organisation. So you're kind of not missing um, any stages in terms of how you approach and respond to this and minimising any sort of sanctions that you may receive from the ICO. So those sort of good working practices um, embedded within the workflow will help your organisations actually make sure that those the responses are of a high standard and um, it's, it conforms with all the legislation associated with FOIs and SARS. So, um, yeah, so I think that's my sort of last slide, but uh, essentially it's a, a great tool to improve 
your policies and processes around handling freedom of information requests in SARS and also helps staff to understand their responsibilities and take accountability for making sure that those requests are responded to as quickly as possible and with the with the with the, with the right attitude in terms of you know allowing customers residents to to have that information um as as quickly as possible and uh using the, their preferred sort of methods in terms of contact etc um thank you brilliant thank you that anita um has anyone got any questions? I know that we can't see anyone um, at the minute, so I don't know whether anyone's had any questions or put anything in the chat. Um, but if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to, to speak up now. I'm sure well, we've got a bit of time anyway, so that we can answer any. Um, so yeah, please feel free. So I think we're a tiny bit overexcited going through this inaugural webinar. So we've rushed through an awful lot of information there. And we want to make sure that everybody's got uh, the option to, to ask any questions or to look at it more in depth. I know that Anita showed a, a snapshot of the uh, interface. So, I mean, if we were looking to proceed through it, so what would be the next steps with regard to looking at a more in-depth demo or interview or discussion about the platform? Um, yeah, so if no one has got any questions, um, what we'll do is we'll be putting in into um, meeting invites over the next couple of weeks, just for five, ten minutes, just so we can um, get some feedback from you guys, answer any questions and discuss whether this is something that would be of interest to you um, and your organisation. And this is the first webinar that we've done within information governance. So really good for us to get an understanding of if we did another one, what would you be interested in? Is there any specific um, topics that you'd like us to go into in a little bit more detail? Um, so yeah, so that'd be really good to get some feedback. Um, I think we've just had a question in the chat about the, the report and capabilities and sort of um, and how in depth they go to to obviously get the best out of out of the system. I don't know whether you can go into that in a little bit more detail, Anita. Sure, sure. So, um, so yes, the report library that we talked about, that I talked about, um, it's a comprehensive management sort of information um, reporting suite. So it allows you to kind of understand. Um, the different types of questions that are coming through, even around subject access requests, what sort of personal data is is, is actually coming through in, in terms of um, the requests that we've received. So the number of options to retrieve information from the reporting side of the system is extensive. Um, it uh, helps you export information. So the reporting library, certain reports, you can actually um, export to Excel and then manipulate that report. We, I use this reporting functionality um, on a daily basis throughout my role in local government, um, particularly around in providing information to the Information Governance Board, which met up every month to talk about the freedom of information requests and subject access requests and disclosure requests that we've received in particular around um, um, information governance and also in ICO. Um, information commissioner's office investigations. It helps you understand how many requests were dealt with at, for example, at a freedom of information request stage that then escalated to an internal review. So request for versus internal review versus what then escalated out of those cases to the ICO and why more importantly. So it helps you fill in the gaps and improve your services. So the reporting capability allows you to carry out that further analysis, identification of trends and the monitoring of those cases and the quality assurance of managing those cases and what went wrong in terms of if it escalated. And sometimes we go, the cases go to the ICO um, regardless we could have done everything provided all the information um, to the requester um, and they will remain dissatisfied and they will still may escalate to the ICO but it goes to show in the cases where there are gaps and stages may have been missed maybe the, the process hasn't been followed correctly um, and therefore um, there is a case for the ICO to investigate in terms of um, providing more information to the requester so it lets you analyze all of that information and understand um, use it as a service improvement tool within your organisation to understand um, 
where you can fill the gaps and where we need to improve as a as an organization in handling um, um, freedom of information and subject requests. Also, do IG officers understand the, the, their responsibilities around managing FOIs? Do we need to provide training um, in particular areas to kind of bring them up to date in terms of handling those requests? So it's a it's um not just data and statistics and performance and compliance, but also uh, a great tool, the library reports, um, the analysis that the information that you receive from the system actually enables you to kind of um, carry out a holistic kind of review on a regular basis through those sort of management board meetings, if that's something that you hold within your organisations, um, to kind of understand the different trends and and reasons and delays, etc. So yes, there's a, there's a, there's, it's a, essentially very crucial to effectively managing FOIs and SARS and uh, individual rights requests within your organisation. Also, third party police, other organisations will ask for information from you. How are you sort of responding to those? What are your case timescales around those? And do they need to be reviewed? Is there a delay in a particular area? Um, so yes, quite com comprehensive in terms of um, giving you that information to be able to improve um, the, the handling of those requests in your area. I hope that's answered the um, question. Yeah, we've just got one more question. Thanks, Anita. Obviously, that was a really comprehensive answer. So thanks for going into detail with that. Um, got another question that's just come through in terms of the disclosure log and how it is linked um, to the system and what the benefits are of actually um, using a disclosure log. So, so I mean, the, yes. So the disclosure log is um, integrated with is an integrated part of the workflow. So as you go through um, re responding to a freedom of information requests, um, sort of the end outcome of following you, you sort of logging an outcome of of that FOI request, it is part of the workflow, um, and it asks it prompts you to say, would you like to publish this information to um, to your website, to the disclosure log. And so it gives you sort of a scripted workflow. It's you say yes. If you say no, you need to explain and give your reasons as to why that information might not be. But usually it's, we publish most information that we, we put in the public domain. Um, and so it's embedded within the workflow and it automatically very easy um, to say yes. And it automatically then uploads a redacted version of the response um, to your disclosure log, which is on the website. So it's embedded. So it, it pushes the information and a redacted version of the response onto your website um, under a disclosure log title. Um, and as you can see on this one, uh, on the screenshot on the screen, sorry, Neil, I'm not sure if we can go back to the FOI disclosure log slide, but um, essentially that's what it would look like for a, a, a person coming onto your website. And, and that's what they see, an FOI disclosure log, and it asks you to put in a keyword um, and you would put in police, for example, and then it will pull up all the, all the um, requests associated with that category and it then you can actually search to see um, and not only just the redacted version of the response it also uploads any attachments that are associated with that response as well and you know it could be that the customer has found what they were looking for um, and so in terms of good working practices you kind of put the disclosure lo log on the front page of your sort of websites where it talks about freedom of information um, and so it gives them the opportunity to go there first search and if they don't find it then then submit make an FOI request then prompts as a follow-up um, and sort of collapses into the next stage and so that's one of the areas but also um, when staff are logging because we don't always have FOIs that come through online offers where Sorry, you're actually anything, you're, you're sort of just breaking up there a little bit can you hear me now yeah that's better see so, so even during as I mentioned earlier uh, during the um, logging process it prompts caseworker to say there's a, a similar response there um, and which has already been responded to a prior response which has been published to the website to the disclosure log and caseworkers can simply signpost a person to the disclosure log um, and that's a place closed essentially that because the response is already in, in the public domain ready for the for the person to access so um, the system as I said publishes a redacted version of the response and uh, it saves time and effort of your IG teams having to kind of collaborate with individuals to find that information. Remember, we've done that already 
don't need to recreate that and the response might be there and in some cases it could be the response is there until last month but they might want it for the remaining part and it helps you then minimize the amount of information you need to collate you can signpost to that particular period of information and then you can respond to the remaining period that outstands on the foi request Right. We've opened up a bit of a floodgate. We've got a few questions coming in now uh, at the moment. So I just want to reiterate the fact that we will answer them all. If we don't get time today, then I'll press an ether into providing us an answer for it. So if I could just run through a couple of them. Uh, the first one was a quick one. It could actually be for Lauren. Uh, it's from, uh, it says, hi, you've talked a lot about your local authorities. Are health organisations using this? Yes, we health. The health organisation is something that we've we've recently um, had had quite a bit of success in. Um, my colleague is D is the um, lead for that for that particular area. But yeah, it's something which has got a lot of attraction in the last year, and we're doing uh, all we can, obviously, to provide the solution within the health um, market. So afterwards, D will be following up with any health attendees who are on the call. Um, and she'll be able to answer all of the questions, any sort of feedback that you may have in that area. But yet we are working with health organisations um, who are um, deploying the solution within within that area. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, the next one is is just asking for, for, for seeing the other module. So we'll be following up with everybody to show them more in depth of it. Uh, I've got a question with, with the redaction tool. How far does this go? I just does this just redact obvious personal information name surname etc or is it able to pick up contextual personal personal data also it actually picks up um, personal uh, um, identifiable information also so we have um, sort of um, an out of the box um, redaction tool um, which um, works um, similar to Adobe Pro DC if that's um, something that you're using but uh, but also we have an enhanced um, AWS Amazon Web Services version um, which works um, a bit more better um, it pulls all it and it automatically annotates um, personal personal information the, the, the key ones like name address email bank account number may be provided but also um, any keywords that your your organization kind of um, uses on a regular basis uh, which needs to be redacted from any given um, documentation so yes it, it, it's quite comprehensive the AWS version in terms of um, the information it come it pulls through for ready redaction Super. Uh, next one is can this be a standalone solution used in CIGT or do we need organization wide system access CIGT, sorry, I'm not uh, sure what that we, is. We, uh, we can request that with, with, with the answer, I'll follow it up from it. Um, okay. so does it link okay. with our Active Directory or do we need to enter all key stakeholders all set up? So the system works in a way where you obviously you can collaborate with colleagues across um, the all. Uh, 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 third party stakeholders etc you they don't need to have access to the system to be able to um to be able to collaborate so i you know i as a I, I casework user can go out to um any sort of departmental contact or non-departmental contact so it could be a stakeholder um that you need to get some information from you simply enter their sort of email address in and you can collaborate and get information and comments from people who don't actually use who's a non iCase work user as well as an iCase work user um, the information um, request system stands on its own in terms of those different case types that we talked about FOI, SARS, individual rights requests but obviously you know some organizations have complaints as well so it all comes as part of one single system complaints and member inquiries and compliments and suggestions, whichever sort of case types need to be included, um, those can be sort of sitting in one single standalone system. Brilliant. I think Sorry, just on the other question as well, uh, Neil, do, do you mind just re repeating the, the question before that? Because I think we were wondering what CIGT yeah, means, the, but it's just corporate information be a standalone governance standalone system used in corporate information governance team, or do we need organisation-wide system access? 
the, the access user access privileges are, are customizable so it's not set to um it it's not you can have a an enterprise sort of setup where everyone has access to the system or you can group access for information governance teams to have um access to the core part of the business in terms of ig you can set custom access privileges for other roles within the organization to access the system in a less sort of um um access privilege way so we've got power users we've got basic users you can customize some of those user roles to say you can do x but you can't what do y and so it's quite um configurable in terms of the user access roles within the system and it all depends on what role and what level of access you need um, to be able to um, manage um, your role within ig so you could just be a basic user that needs read access only so you don't you get restricted access you can't manage cases you can't access different workspaces if you're not part of a system so it works in many different ways and there's different levels of access privileges depending on the role and um, the access to the system that you require and um, but just just on that point as well um yeah you can just bring in the, the system as a standalone solution just for foi and um, that's how we work with a lot of organizations we will start either with foi or complaints um, and then um as time moves on we will add different modules onto the system so we can grow with you in terms of whether you want to start with foi and then we can explore other avenues or if you just simply just want a standalone solution for foi that is something that we we do work with a lot of organizations to provide so um yeah just wanted to 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 jump in with that um any more neil almost like you were psychic we've got a few more few more so this one talks about uh data protection impact assessments mm -hmm. uh so it's got could you elaborate what we can do with a process on the system is it part of the for SAR module or is it a separate module it's uh it sits under the same platform um it's not a standard case type so you if you would like uh dpia to be part of your information governance system then you can speak to us and we can we can we can arrange for that to, to for that to happen so essentially it helps you it's uh, got a workflow in the system to help you identify um, minimize kind of the data protection risks revolved around managing maybe a large scale project that you need um, to carry out a DPI for. It kind of stipulates whether you need to carry out a data protection impact assessment um, fully or if it sits within the criteria. So it's got a kind of scripted criteria process that you go through and depending on the answers that you give it, the system will then automatically advise you um, that um, whether you need to carry out a full sort of DPIA assessment on this or whether it's fine to go ahead and proceed um, you can sort of add the details of who's what departments it sits within so it kind of has a section of um, guidance in terms of referrals to the ICO website around things that you need to be aware of when you're carrying out a DPIA and and basically identifying so the steps you know identifying the need for a dpia and is this project that you're carrying out in what is it kind of label it and and give us some sort of screening questions answers to some screening questions that match the the, the, the criteria to be able to carry out a dpia and then you describe and if it is then you describe the process you know what will you do you know what's involved who are the individuals so for those of you that have carried out dpias on this call you know the process and the system is designed and the workflow is designed to capture that process and describe the scope of the processing the project and the consultation process if one is um, applicable um, and then it takes you through to the end sort of area around um, mitigating any risks you know have you internally managed that process or do you need to manage that process um, do we need to report this to the ICO um, and um, what any other actions that you need to take in, in relation to conducting a data protection impact assessment um, um, the necessity and um, making sure it's in proportion with the actual regulations under the GDPR super there's a couple more a couple more that we could quickly go through so one talks about the foi disclosure log and it's how long are previous foi responses stored in the library for so we have a retention period within the system so you can as a sort of administrator of the system define your retention periods within the system so how long do you want to store those um case types for 
Um, you can set those retention periods aligned with your retention policy um, and that you have the controls to do that within the system administration functionality. So you may want to anonymize cases for a period of time. You may say after closure, you want them to drop off after five years and that will automatically remove those cases during that period. So you don't have to revisit to remind the system to do that um, so it's entirely down to you so you can anonymize and you can still report on the data and insight um, we know we get FOIs around how many FOIs have we received uh, within the year so you get you can keep the data uh, uh, associated with those case types but drop off all the personal information related to that but you have control in, in setting those um, periods um, as a system administrator of your system. Super. Uh, there's a couple more duplicate questions. Uh, one more that stands out is, do we need to do all of the letter templates to set up the process? Or have you got a library of developed templates that we can use our branding on? We have, so correspondence templates is um, set up for you during implementation. So you will have a sort of essentially a library of ready-made uh, correspondence templates. And all of those templates are aligned with your working practices. So acknowledgements, responses, holding letters, request for ID. So yes, there's a, there's a, a back end system during implementation will work with you to brand um, and give it the look and feel of your organization. But essentially the system comes with a, um, a suite of correspondence templates um, that have been aligned with good working practices and pulls through all the um, legislative information that you require to respond to FOIs and SARS. Super, that's covered most of the questions that we've got in there. There's a couple more, but I think that they're mainly things that we've already covered in the Q&A session. Uh, obviously, I'd like to thank all of the attendees for coming along and Lauren uh, for delivering the intro and Anita for, for thinking on her feet and answering all of those lovely questions. Um, Lauren, did you want to do a sign off? Yeah, obviously, just to, to reiterate what Neil said, thanks everyone for jumping on. Um, I know we've managed to keep um, the majority of all the attendees um, signed on till the end. So thanks everyone for jumping on. I um, hope it's been um, helpful and gave you something to think about over the next couple of weeks. As I said earlier on, we will be putting um, five or 10 minutes in the diary um, over the over the course of the next couple of weeks, just to catch up and, and, and as I said, just get feedback, answer any questions um, and just discuss whether this is something that your organisation would be interested in. So um, look forward to that and thanks everyone again for jumping on and hopefully see you all soon. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you.